Hey guys, I'm Timothy Wu from Balletics, and today I'm here to introduce my latest product, the SIM 7000 LTE NB-IoT Shield for Arduino. As always, for this open source project, you can find the latest documentation in the video description below, which includes schematics, design files, example Arduino IDE code, and a full wiki tutorial. That being said, be sure to share and subscribe, and let's get right into it. So here are some of the basic items that you'll need in order to get your shield up and running. First and foremost, we have the SIM 7000 LTE NB-IoT shield, which you can buy on my website in the video description below. Since there are three versions of the shield, please check the wiki tutorial on how to select the version based on your geographical location. The shield comes with stacking female headers, not assembled, in, in case you want to put your own headers on it, and it also comes with an, a dual LTE GPS antenna with easy snap-on connectors. You will also need an Arduino or Arduino clone, and you can use the Arduino Uno, Arduino Mega, or Arduino Leonardo with the shield for version 4.0 or later. Now, you can also use any other 3.3 volt or 5 volt microcontroller if you're okay with externally wiring up the two boards instead of using it directly as a shield. But that's up to you. You'll also need a cable in order to program your Arduino. Last but not least, you will need a SIM card that can be used in your area, and it will need, most importantly, to have a data plan. For this example, I'm using a hologram SIM card, hologram developer SIM card from hologram.io, and you can find the link also in the video description below. This SIM card comes with one megabyte of free data per month and works well for this shield, so I'm gonna use it for now. With that, let's get started with the software aspect. All right, so the first thing you have to do, obviously, is to plug in your Arduino to your computer via the USB cable, and then open the Arduino IDE. So let's go to Tools, Board, and make sure you have the right board selected. In this case, I'm using an Arduino Uno. You should also make sure you have the right COM port selected. Next, go to File, Examples, and here you'll find all the built-in examples for Arduino IDE, as well as examples for any other libraries you've installed in the past. Let's go to the Adafruit Fauna library. This is the updated library that I have on my GitHub page for the LTE shield. Let's open Fauna LTE test. This example code is, uh, is an example code that uh, allows you to easily test the functionalities of your LTE shield in the serial monitor. Let's first scroll to the end of the setup function. It's around line 158 or so. Here we have the APN setting. So this is specific to your SIM card and cell carrier. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm using a hologram.io developer SIM card. So the APN they provided is just hologram without username or password. So let's go ahead and upload this to our board, making sure that we have the right board and COM port selected. So the first thing the Arduino will do after the code uploads is it will try to establish a connection with the SIMCOM module at 115200 baud rate. This is a little too high for software serial to run reliably, so you might see some uh, fishy characters popping up here and there, but that's okay, because it will set it back down to 4800 baud. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So right after it uploads, we'll want to open up this serial monitor. All right. And you should see the green power LED of your LTE shield turn on a few seconds after the code uploads. So it pulses the power key pin on your LTE shield low for about 100 milliseconds to turn it on. So as you can see here, it initializes at 115200 baud rate, which is a little too fast, and that's why you see all these little weird arrows pop up or some random characters. Sometimes you see boxes like this, and as you can 
See, this is obviously wrong. It should be SIM 7000A. And, but that's okay because it configures it back down to 4800, which is good. And then you don't see anything after that, anything weird. So it found, found the uh, module here. And as you can see, I'm using the American version, the SIM 7000A. And it prints out the IMEI as well as this gigantic table here. And these are all the little options for testing out the individual functionalities of the LTE Shield. So let's get started. First of all, we would like to know if it's connected to the cell network or not. Um, I already have the SIM card inserted, so you should have done this before uploading code or turning on your Arduino or anything. And let's just press N to get the network status. And first of all, before that, you should make sure that you have both new line and carriage return selected in your serial monitor. So let's, you can either press send or just hit enter. Here it says register roaming and that's okay because I'm using a hologram SIM card and they partnered up with a lot of different cell carriers. So you might just get roaming all the time, but that's, that's okay, it works. You might also get registered home if you're using a different SIM card. So in order to read the signal strength, let's type in I and hit enter. So here the RSSI is 30. I think the max is 31, which is the next bracket or so, but we're doing pretty good. So uh, another thing that we might want to test is just, uh, just for fun, let's see the battery voltage. It's not really battery voltage. Um, the battery voltage and percentage was mainly used for the Fauna product series, Adafruit Fauna series, uh, which use LiPo batteries to power them. So we're mainly just interested in the voltage. So let's type in B and enter. As you can see here, we get around 3.6 volts, which is correct because uh, we the SIMCOM module on the LTE shield is actually using a 3.6 volt regulator to power it. So that's expected here. And we don't really care about this battery percentage thing. So in order to start posting data to the cloud, uh, we need to first enable GPRS. So let's go down here and enter capital G. This sets the APN and you can see here it's hologram and everything went smoothly. After running this code, you should see the blue net light LED on your LTE shield start blinking more rapidly, which is a good sign. So now we're actually ready to start posting to the cloud via HTTP. So let's do that by entering two. This is a little example I wrote mm -hmm. that uses Dweet.io, a free cloud API. You can actually, it actually runs in the browser just fine and you can experiment with it and test pretty easily. So let's go ahead and enter two. And here, everything went okay. And actually this is the URL that you can copy and paste into your browser to post this data. So right now it's posting an arbitrary temperature value and battery value. So this is just from an analog read, I believe, and multiplying it by a random value. Um, and this is just hard coded. So in order to see if this is actually right, we need to go to our browser and check Dweet.io to read the latest value for this device ID. This device ID is actually just the IMEI number of the sim of the SIMCOM module on board. So I already actually have this URL constructed here, but it's very simple. It's just tweet.io, get latest tweet for the device ID. And it's like tweeting, but with a D. So you just press enter and it says it succeeded. And as we can see here, we get 702.33 and 3600, voila. Yep, 702.33 and 3600. And we can even see a little timestamp here. Great, so we know that it's working. So the next thing we wanna do is, let's turn on GPS, so capital O. So 
in order for this to work, you, you obviously need your antenna connected and everything, um, even for the first example. But this one's particularly important. And let's query the location by entering L. So as you can see here, nothing really pops up. So we only have three satellite connections here. And it might take a little time to get a fix on location, especially for a cold start like this. And as you can see, still nothing. That's okay, should get one pretty soon. So you can see this number start starting to climb here from three to 13 to 14. So that's, that's a good sign. And right now I'm inside, so it might take a little longer than usual, but we should, should get a reading pretty soon. This format here is called the NMEA format, and it's basically just a, a bunch of data in a CSV format. So it puts everything separated by commas, and it has all the information you'll ever need, including the time, latitude, longitude, altitude, speed, course, etc., etc. Really cool stuff. Oh, there we go. So now we have a we have the uh, data, the GPS data, and you can copy and paste this into a, a text editor to make it easier to see. But as you can see, there's the latitude, longitude, altitude, heading, and all that, and uh, speed date, time, all this good stuff. And that's, yeah, it works. Let's do it again. There we go. It's pretty accurate. All right, and you, you can turn this off if you want. Going to O. And actually the next time you turn it back on and query the location, it'll be a lot faster. Yeah, I think it uses assisted GPS. So that's that's pretty much it for this. Um, well, there's one last thing I would like to show you, um, just to kind of get you excited about it. Back in examples for the Adafruit Fauna Library here, there is an IoT example. So this example, I'll let you figure it out on your own, but it's an example that uh, makes the Arduino post every 30 seconds, or you can change it, but periodically, based on the sampling rate that you can set. And it will post data, GPS data and temperature data to dweet.io. It'll go to sleep and then wait this period, this amount of time here, and wake up again, post, etc. So really cool for things like GPS trackers and IoT devices, data logging, that sort of thing and just have fun with it, play around with it. And it's, it's really cool because it goes through the entire process automatically. So it, it connects to the network, make sure, it makes sure that it, it's really connected to the network. It proceeds you know, to get turn on GPS, get a GPS fix, get temperature, all that post, and you know, it, it, it handles all that. So really cool example here, and I definitely suggest you check it out. And here you can actually comment this line out if you want it to only run once instead of waking up and doing it again. So anyway, cool piece of code here, and I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe as always. And you can find me at my website in the video description below, and I look forward to seeing you next time.